Hey, welcome to another episode of Aquamate. Today we are going to be looking at what might kill your fish in your aquarium. Uh, I've recently lost one, so I'll show you what I do to try and figure out what the cause might be and then how to learn from a lesson from it all and make sure it doesn't happen to my other fish. So unfortunately, we all lose fish when we have pet fish. It's something that happens and there's many, many reasons it can happen. It can be things like parasites, it can be uh, toxins in the water before you even put them in the tank, uh, not the right temperatures, just not the right fit for that fish. Other fish can kill other fish. <laughs> but I've just lost a beautiful koi betta. This was his home. I set this up about three or four weeks ago. I was running the filter on another tank so that I had a already established um, bacteria colony in this filter. So my thoughts was that everything would be fine. He started slowing down a couple days ago uh, and I thought he doesn't look quite right. So I moved him back to his original tank and I think it was too late. So let's do a test on this water and uh, see where we land because I want to try and figure out what it, what happened and I want to share it with you guys and we're doing a little bit of a vlog style. Now I've already gone and filled up the vials here so we're not doing any uh, any real editing on this video this week so you can hang out with me while we do this. So we want three drops for the pH test. I always give him a little bit of a shake. We'll just chuck that over there and I'll put that in front of there. So next, we're gonna drop one of the vials. We wanna look at our ammonia. So now ammonia, you add eight drops of this and then eight drops of this. I generally will add this and shake this one up and then pop it in. So, count out our drops. Five, six, seven, eight. And the ninth one tries to get in there. Put our lid back on, give that a bit of a shake. And then. Eight for the ammonia. Let's see. I'm really curious about this one. I remember yellow on the ammonia is low. That one can take a few minutes to really kick in and give you an idea of what's going on. Next, we have our nitrite, which is just a single five drops from this. And blue is good for that one so far. We'll wait and see if that changes. And last, but definitely not least, is our nitrate. This one is 10 drops and 10 drops. Again, I see you should shake it for like a minute before you do it, but yeah. Let's be honest, not everyone's gonna shake it for a minute. So. Ten. I lie, I will add it. I will have some music in the background so that it's not just my heavy breathing <laughs> while I'm counting drops. It's good, you're making me concentrate on my counting. So, shake that one up and let's Give it five minutes or 10 minutes, and then we'll have a look and we'll check our results. All right, so it's only been five minutes. Look, our pH, here we go. Sitting around that sort of seven-ish mark. That's pretty, pretty standard normal, that's fine. Ammonia, a little bit above zero, I'd say. So it's actually a lot better than I thought. I thought this was gonna be the reason. I thought this was gonna be high. And that was due to the aqua soil that I've been using and probably not doing enough water changes. Nitrite, zero, pretty much. There should be more nitrite, but 
maybe the tank is still not cycled, that bacteria hasn't done well, but this could be why. That is bad. <laughs> so nitrate can become toxic to fish in high amounts. We're looking at like 40 to 80 there. That's way too high. It should be sort of anywhere between 20 and zero or 10 and zero. Uh, this can be caused by overstocking. This is a 10 litre tank with one better fish in it. So that was not the case in this instance. It could have something to do with the soil. Um, so there's excess molecules in there that aren't getting taken up by plants. So they, get the, they just end up hanging out in the water. Uh, another big thing is overfeeding. It's real tricky sometimes with betters because they love, us, love to eat. You scatter a little bit of food, but they're slow eaters. They'll go up and grab one piece and then they'll grab another piece. But by then a few other bits have probably fallen down below. So that's my fault. Uh, and water changes are the only way to get rid of this. So <laughs> uh, it's really disappointing to have lost like this really beautiful fish, but it's really important to go through this with you guys and say, this is what I didn't do properly in this tank. And maybe that's, because I've got so many bloody tanks going on and I set this up and I thought it was all gonna take care of itself. But um, yeah, that's how we uh, test our water and find out what happened to my favorite koi betta fish. So there you have it. I hope this has been really helpful for a lot of you. I hope that you learned uh, a good lesson and also just give you a bit more confidence that if you're doing the right thing at home, that you're staying on top of what ended up being a fatal issue for my fish, unfortunately. Thank you very much for watching. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. We're always learning more about fish and we've got a whole bunch of fish tanks that we're setting up at the moment. So it's a pretty exciting time to be a part of the channel. Next week, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're gonna do a vlog of the whole fish room, all of my tanks. We're gonna have a look, we're gonna take out the end of the year with a bit of a bang uh, and wish everyone a Merry Christmas, but let's show you where the room is at, what the channel's done for the year and what we can be looking forward to next year. So saying all that, I'm gonna have to go and start getting prepared for that video already. It's gonna be a big one, so can't wait to see you guys then. Hope you're all safe. See you soon.